Hello everybody and welcome to the Compasa. Uh, today I'm gonna talk about, well, it's gonna be a bit of a ranting video really. Um, as we all know, there has been a terrible earthquake in in both Turkey, which is the epicenter, but it's also uh, spilled, well, it's also in Syria, right? And obviously my condolences to everybody uh, that has uh, lost someone in those respective countries. But I would like to stress the fact that um, Western powers, I'm going to, you know, they often talk about the civilized West, the um, epitome of freedom, right? The, uh, you know, that this is a civilization we should look up to. And in many regards, you can look up to the West. I'm not saying that. There's, you know, technological advancement, you know, it's uh, to a certain extent work ethic. Not that they are the only ones who are pioneers in this or they are the best in this. You know, Chinese people, the Chinese civilization is also one of those advanced civilizations that you can look up to. I, I deeply admire the work ethic of, for example, East Asian uh, populations. But nonetheless, these so-called freedom-loving people in, in Western governments um, have put on some of the most brutal sanctions on Syria as a country, right? The Caesar Act and so forth. For eight years, they have been pretty much destroying the country, right? They have armed right-wing Salafist death squads that have caused mayhem, destruction, and death. And in the north of the country, the United States is occupying one-third of, of Syria. Uh, uh, together with its Kurdish proxy, the SDF. Also, well, well, it's also known as the YPG, which is a branch of the PKK. Effectively starving the Syrian government out of its revenue, oil revenues. I think we should keep that in mind. I'm not, I'm not minimizing the deaths in Turkey uh, or trying to say that, you know, that they are less, less uh, important. Obviously, they're not. I think it's a tragedy, nonetheless, both in Syria and in Turkey. But I would say that the, the, the scale, because of the sanctions, because of the destruction of the war, the Im war imposed by the collective West on Syria and Israel, may I add, and uh, some of their Muslim allies in the region, including Turkey, to, Turkey bears a big responsibility as well for the destruction in Syria. The situation in Syria is obviously way worse. And I thought we could read a, ex, a excerpt from uh, where this article, the TASS news agency from Maria Zakharova. And uh, I agree with her. The West's sanctions on Syria is inhumane. And it goes like this, the West's refusal to provide aid to, to quake-ravaged Syria inhumane, says Russian diplomat. Maria Zakharova noted that the collective West ignored the fact that the earthquake with its epicenter in Turkey resulted in the deaths of thousands of people and the terrible destruction of Syria itself. And by the way, uh, Russian military is in Syria right now as we're speaking and helping uh, the people in Syria uh, bringing people out of destroyed homes and, and et cetera, et cetera. So uh, they also doing a lot of humanitarian work in that sense. Um, the refusal by the collective West to provide aid to Syria in dealing with the aftermath of the devastating earthquake is inhumane, Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova said at a briefing on Friday. In the current circumstances, the illegal unilateral sanctions introduced against Syria remain effective and this, to put it mildly, hinders the process of dealing with the aftermath of the earthquake and providing aid to Syrians by other countries and NGOs, she noted. This directly leads to 
uh, only to human suffering, but also loss of life. And given the, the scale of the tragedy that occurred in Syria, such behavior by Western countries contradicts the norms of human morality and cannot be excused. This is simply inhumane logic, the diplomats stressed. Now, are the Russians savages? Are they barbaric? Are they the ones that are uncivilized in this sense? Because imposing a war on a country then opposing imposing sanctions on the country okay and let's remember the 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 um the uh, the point of sanctions why are western countries sanctioning different countries well it the goal to to the goal with sanctioning countries is to starve them is to starve the population make it so economically uh, difficult for them to live that they will rise up against their government. It's a way to destabilize uh, a country that opposes your geopolitical uh, aspirations. Syria is one of those countries that do not want to bow down to American and uh, Western hegemony, right? It is a country that is part of the so-called uh, resistance axis which was created by, to a large extent, Iran. Uh, and uh, Syria is the only, uh, or one of the few, I would, yeah, I would only say it's the only country in the Arab world that supports uh, the Palestinian resistance. It's a supporter of Hezbollah. And obviously, uh, this is a, uh, a thorn in the eye uh, of the Zionist uh, regime uh, that is occupying Palestine at the moment. Uh, and that's why Syria is uh, on the target, uh, on the sanctions list, so to speak. We can also go into the detail of, you know, uh, their central bank is not owned by, uh, you know, the bankers of Wall Street and London and uh, whatnot. Um, but I would say that's the main reason why Syria is targeted by these by these Western countries. And I'll continue. She uh, she noted that the collective West ignored the fact that the earthquake, with its epicenter in Turkey, resulted in the deaths of thousands of people and the terrible destruction of Syria itself. This is not just a manifestation of the politicized approach which the West is guided by in the process of providing humanitarian assistance to those affected in that country. This is something monstrous, the diplomat stated. We urge the, the West to immediately reconsider its inhumane position and lift the restrictive measures there are in force against Syria, she said. Once again, we emphasize the need for urgent international assistance to the Damascus to Damascus in close coordination with the Syrian government while respecting the sovereignty and territorial integrity of this country, Zakharova concluded. A powerful 7.7 .7 magnitude earthquake rocked Turkey's uh, Kahraman Maras province, located in the country's southeast in February 6th. The, tr uh, the tremors, followed by hundreds of aftershocks, were felt in 10 provinces as well as in neighboring countries, including Syria, where the Aleppo, Latakia, Tartus, and Hama province in the countries west and northwest were the most affected. According to the Syrian Health Ministry, the devastating quake has left over 1,300 people dead in the already war-ravaged Middle Eastern country, with the number of those injured exceeding 2,200. All I can say is I uh, send my condolences to both Syria and, and, and Turkey. I have said my piece and I completely agree with, uh, uh, with the minister, you know, um, Maria Zakharova. Uh, it, it's hitting Syria uh, twice as hard uh, because of this, because of the war and as well as the sanctions. I wanted to make a short video about this and uh, Yes, uh, eventually, you know, the, the West is sanctioning almost everybody on the planet soon, you know, and it's going to hit back. I mean, the sanctions on Russia uh, hit back on the West. It's like a boomerang effect, right? 
they thought that the Russian economy was going to collapse. But, you know, even according to Western uh, sources like the, I think it was the Financial Times or the Bloomberg, nonetheless, all, they are all saying that uh, Russia's economy is actually going to stabilize. In fact, it's going to grow a little bit, 0.3%. Not a whole lot, but it's going to uh, grow. And there was now recently a Bloomberg article that said uh, uh, that Russia managed to beat the sanctions also because the government is constantly investing in the in the economy, right? But I also believe, of course, they have the Chinese who are dealing with them. Uh, that that's a huge market, right? Uh, China is also a um, when it comes to infrastructure, you know, they build like crazy, right? So, um, yeah, uh, Russia has played its moves very well. But, you know, when they put the sanctions on Russian gas and oil, you know, the Americans, the Europeans, they went around crazy, right? They were looking for, uh, you know, uh, for oil in Venezuela, for, for oil in Iran and gas deals in Iran. Uh, but the problem is you sanction those countries. And, uh, you know, not only that, you... You know, there was an attempted coup and, and, and assassination plot against uh, Maduro, first with a drone and then with the ridiculous idea of sending mercenaries uh, to Venezuela. And then they got caught by a bunch of fishermen. Um, and then Iran, obviously, you know, Iran, they, they said that Iran is a sponsor of terrorism, you know, that they're the scum of the earth and et cetera, et cetera. But now you, you want... Iranian gas and oil. Obviously, I don't believe they're going to lift those sanctions. Um, you know, I, anyway, I think it's better that Venezuela or Iran or other uh, or Cuba or other countries just just make business with the Russians and the Chinese. You can at least trust them that they won't destroy your your infrastructure, right? <laughs> Unlike uh, you know. Unlike the Western, uh, you know, unlike the United States, because the United States destroyed Nord Stream 2. And who affected the most? Yeah, the, the German economy. And what does that show? That the United States, I mean, it, you can't trust it as an ally. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, and Henry Kissinger said it best. It's worse to have the United States as a, uh, as a, as a friend than an enemy. Yes, and with those uh, words, I want to say thank you. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll be back on the next one. Thank you.